Count down. Three, two, one. All right. So, uh, Andrew, why don't you uh, fill us in on what's the topics for today? Yeah. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen, too. Sweet. So kind of see what I'm looking at here. And so, yeah, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier today. Um, you know, just some hangout topics, just some things that either were brewing over the week or some interesting things that happened this past month. Um, I don't know, some things that interested me and seems like interested uh, others uh, in the iOS developers group. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you guys want to start at the top with IDEs and dev tools. I mean, that's probably the easiest um, kind of finish off with, um, you know, HTML and CSS and all that, all that jazz. Sure, let's get started on dev tools. So What's some talk going on? I think it was yesterday and uh, on Slack about people saying like, yeah, I want Vim and if only Xcode was more like Vim and uh, I think the cause of that was this crazy little uh, report, right, from that student hacker thing? That is um, that oh. HTML <laughs> was a programming yeah. language and was the most popular one and yeah, wasn't yeah, that I, sort I of like say. what spawned this whole IDE thing? I don't think that's what, that didn't spawn the IDE talk. That spawned the HTML. Oh, I, actually, I guess your HTML CSS stuff is different than I thought it was. But yeah, the uh, it it may have spawned from that. We 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 talked about. I think uh, Andy and I were talking about Vim and Xcode, Xvim plugins, Alcatraz, all of that stuff in tools or something. Just trying to get that stuff to work. Xcode is Xcode has recently started screaming at Alcatraz, like, load up, load it up. It it, it kind of like says that there are bundles that Apple doesn't know about, didn't create, and gets them out. Yeah, the first time, yeah, you just have to say, yeah, shut up, Xcode. It's okay. But so like. What's Alcatraz? I've never heard of that before. A package I'm manager for Xcode. A package manager for? Xcode. For Xcode, okay. I never knew that. Sounds it's for, awesome. in, for installing plugins, like uh, uh, Xvim is what I use it for the most. There's also, you can install color schemes and, uh, and stuff like that. Okay. So, like, but Xvim is like, Vim for Xcode? Yeah, it uh, gives you Vim, Vim bindings um, so that you can move around the, your code using the Vim keys, and then it also gives you a uh, modal editing mode, which is the like primary thing that Vim is cool for. Oh, that's cool. So I see John Tate just joined us. Welcome. Yes, the rebel is here. The rebel is here, late <coughs> and fancy and all that. The so, ragamuffin. Um, the ragamuffin is always here. <laughs> so we just got started, sort of uh, talking about like IDEs and uh, and everything. What do you use? What do you like to use? What do you not like to use? Well, um, I use I use Xcode and Sublime Text. That's all. That's the only thing that I use. And I don't have any addition to Xcode because, for me, it works right now. And as a beginner, I'm just trying not to, to complicate anything else. I just, just use what I have. Xcode works for me at this, at this moment. Yeah. And um, I, yesterday, I just changed my theme yesterday from dark to, um, to, to one of to mid, from midnight to dusk or something. Oh, <laughs> it's better. It's, it's actually it's better to me. You have yeah. Excuse me? You hacker totally hacking your color schemes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what else is on our agenda today? Is that... uh, if you look at Andrew's screen, it's uh, it's right on there. Okay, so um, so we just started. So are we gonna get done at one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I was gonna try to yeah try to make this an hour. We like kind of just started, yeah. so. Yes. Yeah. Um. Let, let, let's just let's just let's let's get this going and let's just be um very um. Um. Very strict with the timing. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I'm timing this. Yeah. 
I'm already working on everything. Yeah, so right. I think yeah, that's pretty much it for the um, I mean for IDEs and Dev Tools. I mean, some people are using XVim, some people are using Alcatraz. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, Vim is. Well, there 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 was some uh, talk also about app code. Uh, does anybody here use app code? App code. What is it? What does it even do? It's another IDE. <laughs> Yet another IDE because we do not have enough IDEs. Okay, wait, wait. I've not met. Is that is your name Ethan? Ethan. Yeah, I've not met you. I'm nice to meet you, man. Hi, nice to meet you. Okay. Um. Yeah, I've not heard of that, uh, Ryan. It's, uh, it's it's a JetBrains, uh, the guys who do IntelliJ uh, and PyCharm and a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other tools. They 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 do a whole bunch of IDEs that all kind of have the same. Uh, the same look and feel, I guess, and um, they have one for doing iOS development as well. It's called App Code. Mm. Would you prefer that over Xcode, for example? Because I like what John just said. Like, like Xcode does everything I need it to do. I don't think I need plugins or whatever. Like, why would I want to use a whole different IDE over Xcode if Xcode works fine? Well, for one, they have an Android uh, IDE as well, so uh, if you're a person who does both, it's nice to not have your whole tool set change between the two. It's just then a language change and frameworks change. Uh, which is why you like XVim probably as well, I guess. Well, I like, I like XVim because I learned Vim like seven or eight years ago, and it it is a whole other way of editing text, and I basically can't can't edit text without it anymore, and so I I need it in anything that I'm in. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same the same way with that with uh with Vim. Yeah, I learned it a while back, and um, you start to get really efficient with it, and it's um it's very hard to go back to to using the regular keys. Um, after using Vim for a while. Yeah, I can see that. Nothing testify to that. Uh, does anybody here know Coda, the, like the HTML, PHP kind of... It's sort of a hybrid between IDE and a plain text editor. Like, I have it. It's, it's dope. Yeah, me too. I, I like that. I used to use that all the time, and then I switched to Sublime for a bit, and then now I spend all my time in Xcode. Yeah, yeah, code is pretty awesome. It's a, it's a, it, it's made by uh, Panic. Um, yeah. That company, Panic, and that Panic also makes uh, what is it? The the terminal was it forklift, which is really awesome. Um, uh, no, it's uh, it's called Transmit, I think. Transmit, and that's it. That's the FTP client. They also have like uh, I forget what it's called. Oh. They have um, no, a, a command line interface thing for your. Uh, iOS devices, so you can SSH into your servers and uh, yeah, yeah, check yeah. them out remotely, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I it's think called the only it's uh, called prompt. Text what, what story you in? It's H called prompt. Prompt, yeah, exactly. That's what it's called. I really like all of their stuff, actually. Hmm. Panic's cool. I've never, yeah, I've never heard of the prompt one before. Um, I've definitely used Coda and Transmit. Like, I think Transmit like works inside of Coda. Like, there's a way to like get those like to work seamlessly together and stuff like that. It does, yeah. They their, think their stuff. Their website's um, title tag is pretty true. Panic, shockingly good software. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're also sort of well known for their whole customer support thing. They and really so, have awesome. And so Coda. And Coda is like a is a paid software. Is is App Code a paid software as well? Is that is that free like Vim and um? I'm pretty sure App Code costs money. Yeah, yeah App Code's a hundred bucks. I think. I don't mind pay. I don't mind paying for my software. I really don't because they make your life so easy, bro. Like 
it's stuff you use every day. Like if you every, pay every day, so like, yo, I use for a year, it's thirty cents a day. Thank you. That's exactly how I feel, and I feel as as developers, we should support our more fellow developers. That's just exactly. that's, that's just how it is. Like, I don't mind paying for software, yeah, even, if it's even if it's expensive. I just I fork out the money and then I just don't go to the club for a few weeks or something. Like, well, um, but well, we're using I'm using ScreenFlow. <laughs> I'm actually using ScreenFlow to to. Re I use it to like do a lot of recording and stuff, but I, I I haven't paid for it yet. I just haven't pushed myself towards just paying. It's it's only ninety nine dollars, but I just haven't um just haven't chunked the change over. I'm not sure why, but there's I, I, there there is a few there's a lot of stuff that I kind of I kind of use like that. I kind of use it for the trial, but I just don't want to pay for it just yet. I can see why like. Stuff like code or app code or whatever is software that you're gonna to use to make money with at some point, or already used to make money with. Screenflow, yeah, you probably don't use it professionally, so a hundred bucks is a lot for something to use for fun, I guess. Right, I, I, I mean, I agree, but I, I paid for Screenflow. I like it, I paid for it. Um, uh, Ryan introduced me to a software yesterday that I'm. That I'm gonna buy. As soon as my trial is over, I'm buying that joint. Um, I use it right now. I swear, I used to, bro. It's called Tower. It's for. Oh, that's the best. It's for it's for Git, bro. It's for Git, guys. Listen, you guys can't judge me, right? I just I just started using Git, so. Hey, me too. Pretty much a few months ago. Yeah. Yes. Um. Well, well, Ryan and them were they were judging me because I wasn't I wasn't doing version control. Bro, listen, like so many problems I've had in the past because I didn't do version control. I'm not kidding. It's the and, best. Um, like, I can't tell you how many times I started working on a feature and then realized that I was messing up big time, like two hours into refactoring <laughs> something. Like, tower tower like, looks... Oh, wait, I checked out a different branch so I can just go back and rewind. Tower looks super wait. similar to uh, Source Tree, which is free. Well, there you go. Nah, nah, bro. Source Tree was what Ryan introduced me to first. So I should try Source Tree. I went and checked it out. Bro, it looks so intimidating, but that's before I actually learned Git. And I think that in order to master these things, you should learn Git first before trying to yeah. learn the ID for learning oh. to use the, um, the graphical user interface. Because I didn't, I didn't even know what the terminology was or what it meant. But now that I know, I'm using Tower. So I may be biased towards Tower, but I'm going to pay for Tower. Yeah, some, so sometimes cool. when so yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you're using um, when you're using visual software, it really helps you to um, remember like what certain things are. Like in um, mm -hmm. like if you're using something like Photoshop, you just kind of remember the ellipse tool, and you know that kind of helps you remember like. It, and when it's like actually what it really is, it it definitely helps out a lot. So like um, with Tower, there's a lot of you know it says fork and it says rebase and it has has all the terminology that you use that you need to know um, and you necessarily don't have to type those commands because for the most part you're gonna you'll be aliasing those commands in the um, in the terminal for the most part but it's uh, it's yeah. really just memorizing that terminology and speaking the, speaking the language of, of version control so, you know, I was using the term I was using the terminal <laughs> I, use oh, man. I started with like using tower and stuff, but I just like the terminal better. Nah, bro. No. The reason wow. is that the terminal like <laughs> can't remember the commands. Bro, like when I go into the when I go into um source tree it tells me immediately that exactly. I that I need I need committed or something that needs to be pushed. It tells you like I don't wanna think bro, my software software I'm building has me thinking hard enough. I'm not kidding. Everything else, I just want it to work. Just, just please work. Don't have me thinking. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know what people do when they want to stop thinking for a bit? They take out their iPods and they play a game on them. What do we think of iPods and the future of gaming, you guys? Oh, shoot. Nailed that. IPod. I, I, I I yeah. yeah, nice. I, I, um, I don't know. I've never owned an iPod, and I don't know if I ever will. I, I had one the, five <laughs> six years ago. The first iPod Nano in white, five gigs, stored three thousand dollars. Damn. 
Yeah. That was hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So there's new iPod Touch out. Um, I think this is the first one that has like the iPhone 5 form. Fa- no, wait, it's the second one, right? Yeah, second one. But is it the first one with Retina display? There was no. something that it was the first with. It's had Retina display since the iPhone 4. Damn it. I'm not good Guys, at iPod what? Touch. Guys, why are they keeping it around? Because six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. Yes, I, I think there's a lot of kids out there that want to have like that the the iOS experience. Like they want to be able to have Snapchat. They want to Facebook on the thing. They want to play a bunch of games, take pictures, look I, cool in the playground. I and have. Like, I don't want to buy an expensive iPhone for you. And then there's like the iPod Touch, which does everything an iPhone does except the phone part. I have um, cousins, and there's four of them, and their parents had a, had a system where when they turned a certain age, they got an iPod Touch, and a few years later, at a certain age, they got an iPhone. And it, like, worked for, like, three out of the four, because three out of the four of those devices existed at that uh, at those times. That sounds like a great system, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, they come out with an iPhone every single year, um, yeah. you know, since 2007. So, I mean, you're you're almost guaranteed to continue to hand down the devices, which is, which is awesome. Exactly, but I like the the, the article that you had, Andrew, about like the I I didn't really read it through, but the title itself is really very cool. Like the iPod Touch is the new point and shoot. Yeah, I thought the yeah, the text article. Yeah, it's I guess it's not very uh, like related to gaming. But I like the idea that, in fact, like, the iPod is able to take pictures that are really yeah. good, actually. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really trying to like upgrade the 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 camera on the on the um, on the iPods now, especially the front facing cameras. And I don't think they've always had front front facing cameras. If I'm not, I'm not sure. But since yeah, the, since um, shoot. Um. The one have, they always, have they always had front-facing cameras? The gen, the gen before the fifth, I believe. One second, now I need to check. One second, check the Mac tracker. If you don't know about this app, by the way, Mac tracker, it's super good. It's on iOS and OS ten. It's free. It has like all Apple product hardware history and software history. Oh, awesome, awesome. Most That's Apple cool. store employees have it on their like device that they hold around. So while you look that up, I do wonder, like, which, like, I don't do it personally, but do people really game on their iPods or iPhones? I don't play games. I think, I think games actually kill brain cells. I mean, that's just my opinion. So I just don't play games. I read a book or something. I go outside and play soccer. I was right. Gen 4. Gen 4. Yeah. All right. Cool. But... Why do you think it kills brain cells, John? I mean, games can be very, very stimulating and like educational <laughs> and cool and fun. They train problem-solving are... skills. They help you nah. relax. Games are like games are like watching TV in my opinion. You can, at some point, it may be beneficial, but but more than more time than not, it ends up being um, detrimental. Well, I think sure. g- games in general is very, very, very broad, and that you may, maybe you could focus that argument to a more specific range because there are completely educational games, things that you learn from and have experiences that you really gain, uh, gain from. It's even in in like I don't know, a game like Minecraft maybe, which may may seem like kind of a boring game, I guess. Like, Minecraft isn't really educational, I guess, right? But it does teach just kids things like counting, to work, to work to get something. Like, if you want to craft that cool tool, you gotta collect materials and be patient and work hard to get there. There's multiplication and division in Minecraft. There's multiple what, sorry? Multiplication and division. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's ton, tons of problem solving, um, and that's really 
that's the most important. It's like you're always solving problems in Minecraft, and you got to try to find the best way to do something. Nice. And, and that's that's video games. I mean, that's video games for the most part. I mean, it's usually problem solving, whether it's a, like an adventure game. I remember like Super Mario 64. I mean, you really had to. Everybody kind of played the game kind of in their own way. You kind of had to learn it uh, on your own. It was a. Um, Oh man, I don't know. I I don't play games as much as I used to nowadays, but um, yeah, as a kid, um, video games are really great for your imagination. They are. Hey guys, I don't so, want to knock anybody. I don't, I don't want to knock anybody who play games, but <laughs> you guys should evaluate your arguments before you present them. Uh, there are many things that are that are harmful to us, but they involve problem solving, like. You can think of a many illegal activities that require a whole lot of problem-solving skills or encourages the development of problem-solving skills, but they're detrimental to us. The thing about video games is that oftentimes when people play video games, that they sit down and they spend hours or just a long time, just like when you're watching TV. Like, I could get up in the morning and I could turn on Sports Center and I could watch it until 1 p.m. Now, it's different if you get up in the morning and you're like, I watch an hour of, of, of Sports Center, then I go for a jog, and just find other productive things to, to, to be a part of. I just don't like video games because oftentimes people sit and play video games for hours. And that, it's, it's, not, it's not even an argument. It's something that's been determined by experts. Oh, yeah, sure. If you sit sure. and do any, any activity like that for hours at a time, and it's not I don't think there's a single activity that's good to be doing for hours at a time. Yeah. It's true. Except maybe sleep. Right, but oftentimes people sit and play video games, like video games watching TV. That's the reason I don't have cable at my house, because yeah. I don't want to sit at the TV and watch TV for hours. When I was in college, I could do that. I could put on CNN or, or National Geographic, and I would watch it for hours. National Geographic is an educational channel. I love it. However, I could see myself watching National Geographic for four or five hours. Sure. Not kidding. If, I could, if you do I that, you're doing your social skills, which is exactly. So those things to me is that is that they're one dimensional, and and that's what I don't like about them. You put the, you start those things, and it just it just goes on indefinite. Like when do you stop playing video games? Like how do you know when to put it down and go to do something else more productive? Like reading a book or taking a walk or find a friend and talk to or something like. That. Fair enough. Like if you you have to sort of moderate like the amount of time you spend like sitting there with your maybe iPod Touch like oh, yeah. sitting there playing a game whatever like you have to moderate that doing that for hours in a row is not okay. But it's okay to do that for like thirty to sixty minutes a day. I would say like I would agree. Bed, have fun. You know. Train certain skills that you will train by doing the game. But Would you do you think do you think music is kind of like a similar distraction as games? Like like I, I could kind of see what you're saying, Jazz bro. Like um like you don't you don't need video games, kind of like how you don't need to watch TV, right? But but you do need to learn how to drive a car because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know drive drive in the streets, right? There's certain things that you have to do. And, uh, or we could, or we could skip what Black Rand does. Are, there's certain things that are a waste of time. Right? So, um, I guess, <laughs> what was I saying? Um, yeah, it's like, but, but music, with music, with with just listening to music. Um, sometimes people just listen to music by them by themselves and not even do anything else but listen to music. Yeah, but, but be something similar. But then, maybe you're just maybe you're just relaxing and just um. And um and, and listen to some music, you know that's different. Because if you're relaxing, maybe you listen to them for an hour or something. You go take a nap for a couple of hours. To me, like with watching TV and playing video games, that those things are indefinite. Like when do you stop? Like people just play those things for hours and hours at a time. I had a friend. I had a friend who I came to college with, and he spent an additional year in college because he was playing video games. Didn't know when to stop. Like I would leave in the morning. I'd go to the. I'd go out to get stuff done. I'd come back and he's still playing video games because there's no stopping it. Like you, you could play forever and ever and ever. And um, I don't have anything against video games. I just it's not something I participate in. I, I used to love Mortal Kombat as a child. I played Mortal Kombat until it got the trilogy, and then to me after that it became garbage, and I stopped playing video games. That's a fair point, man. But can you see, like, cause j just to push it a little bit back on topic, like, do you see, like, the iPod Touch being a device that will sort of replace what maybe the Game Boy was for us? Like, we had a Game Boy and we had Super Mario on it. Like, 
Is the iPod yeah. Touch going to be that device? I had a I mean, DS. A DS. Don't admit that to anybody. I'm not kidding. Say, say what again? <laughs> what? Really? No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah, I could see that. I could see that, though. I could see that. I could see the iPod. Hey, I think the gaming industry is pretty big. Like, stuff that I see people doing. Um, so, but I don't know. Like, maybe it could become the iPod. I, I, don't, I don't know. The Game Boy 3 is, is like, it, it's so, the Game Boy is like, it's iconic. I don't know if, I don't know how I see the iPod. I don't know if I see the iPod um, now that it has, it has evolved into what it is. I don't know if I see it as the as same as I, as I saw the Game Boy. The, guy, the Game Boy is like iconic. Like Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But maybe maybe the, the iPod, though, can do what the Game Boy did. Maybe. I think the, um, the new, the new like, um, revolution in gaming is going to be um, the virtual, virtual reality headsets. Yeah. Right? So... And so what you have there with an with an iPod is an automatic a controller. You know, that's that's definitely it can be used as a controller. Um, and it's definitely gonna be like the new age controller, right? Where where nowadays you have, you know, your PlayStation three controllers and they have all these buttons and and things like that. Um, you know, it can it can be it can be used for a lot of different types of things. I'm not just, you know, interacting with the device by itself. It can you know, with Bluetooth and all these other stuff, it, it becomes really powerful in all types of gaming. Um, That's interesting. It's gonna get, yeah, it's going to get really interesting. I'm curious to see. What Do you know that um, the YouTube app now supports VR video? Um, so you can actually watch a virtual reality video on your iPhone or Android device and use, it uses the gyroscope and accelerometer so you can, like, turn your phone and see all different perspectives. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. There's a couple of them on YouTube. It's kind of cool. So basically, I mean, so what would you be... Okay, so with VR, I guess, would you be walking around, or I guess you're just sitting down most of the time when you're, when you're playing VR? Like, what what kind of environment is that usually? I guess you're just sitting there? <laughs> Shit. I don't know. Who was I talking to? Who was that? Eaton? Yourself. No. <laughs> no, I, was <laughs> I was asking Eaton a question. Oh, well. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, it's all good. Okay. So iPods. Interesting stuff. I'm not sure if that's going to be the next big thing. Me neither. And, I, 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 and I've never. always wondered... Who I've always wondered why they kept it around, but I mean, the guys at Apple, they probably know what they're doing. I'm, I'm not really sure why they really keep it around. I think, I think I, it's kids. Yeah, kids. Yeah. I mean, because it's a cheap-ish device for that doesn't require a data plan that parents can get and give to their kids so they can stop giving them their iPhone. Exactly. I think that's the whole reason. I got an iPod Touch 4 right before iOS 7 came out, and I was planning on using it as a dev device, but then that dream went away when iOS 7 came out. So the, the question is, I don't think necessarily this device will be good for developers to get as an extra test device because of the, the way where, I mean, obviously everything's supposed to be using auto layout and size classes, but the phones, the 6 Plus and the 6, and obviously we presume the next iPhones are going to be those similar sizes, that it makes sense to get something smaller when you're developing for much bigger, much, much bigger. I guess. I guess it should just work on all devices. It's not exclude iPods, but I, I see what you're saying. Like, there's more value in having an iPhone 6 than yeah. an iPod Touch. Yo, know, I, I I never thought about the perspective. What Ryan just said, and I just went to the website and and um and looked at the price of the iPod, because our boys have um they have iPads, but we don't always take them with us, and sometimes they ask us to use our phones, and it's annoying. Yep. Yeah. But so when I go home, I'm actually gonna tell Chris that we should get get an iPod Touch. Maybe let's go to the store and get and grab a, and grab an iPod Touch with the boys real quick for real. You should get the blue one. 
<laughs> bro, because like, first, how much? first they don't you, you they don't you, it's one ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. That's not that, that's not bad at all. And um. Yeah, but that's for thirteen games. Which is plenty to play games with. It's the AA yeah, process. For, for your first for world, your eight year old or six year old, uh, it's fine. First, <laughs> first world pains. Like these kids complaining about having what? It doesn't it doesn't matter. <laughs> Alright guys what do you think of HTML and CSS and holding the web back because that was a very interesting discussion that was going on on Slack and uh, we only have about 15 minutes left a little less than 15 minutes so I, I just love uh, J- Jante's uh, reaction there that was good <laughs> that was really good I think that kind of sums it all up <laughs> Guys, listen. Um, so, so this is how I feel. This is just my perspective, right? I use CSS and HTML and JavaScript to build my website when I just started my tutoring company. That's what I use it for. Okay. I was talking to Don recently about my project, and he was encouraging me that um, to develop a a web version of my project. Project, guys. In my opinion, if you have to use it, the web product, because mo- most of us are our mobile developers, if you have to use a web product, just go there and use it. And the, the, the endless debate and the fire, like, this is not the Republican primaries, guys. It doesn't, have, it doesn't, need, to, it doesn't need to get so bitter at all. <laughs> like, we'll just use the products and we'll just, we'll just move on, like, holding the web back. I was reading through the debate, and I'm sorry, I did not find it beneficial. Normally when I come to Slack and I read through the conversations that are passionate, I get a benefit from it, but you guys seem like you guys are just bickering, and it just seemed so bitter. Like, I don't know. I, that's just my opinion. I just tell me, ask me about Xcode, and I can tell you about that. Like, what my problems are with it. I think it thing that affect my productivity right now as I use these products to develop apps, and that's what I that's what I, I I use. I use Xcode primarily, and I really don't care about CSS and HTML. If I have to use it to develop something real quick, I do it and I bounce. Well, so that's interesting. It's the last part. Like, you just do it. But when I started like doing what I do, I started with some HTML, and what I did was I opened the HTML tag, I opened the head, I throw in my style sheet, I type hello world, and bam, I built my first website. Awesome. And from there, I sort of started messing about with some CSS, and I was writing some JavaScript, and somebody said, hey, you should use jQuery, and I was like, oh yeah, sure. So I go to the jQuery website, I download the thing, I include it in a script, and that's how I was building websites. And then I sort of went out of it for just a few months, and there were people like, but you don't use Grunt? You download your jQuery? You savage. (laughs) What are you doing? And it's like, well, what should I be doing? Yeah, you should have a build pipeline, and you should be minifying, concatenating all your JavaScript, use tests for your CSS, and you're not using BEM, what's wrong with you? It's like, Dude, it's just building websites, and that's like one big issue that I have right now with with web development. It's easy to get that hello world out, but that's when you have to install Ruby, Node, npm, Bower, Gulp, Grunt, choose one, have a good reason for it because people are gonna flame you if you choose the wrong one. <laughs> like, if you pick the wrong JavaScript framework for that week, everybody's going to be angry with you. It's like, why are you using <laughs> Angular? Like, Ember is so much cooler right now. It's like, hey, dude, I made a decision for the coming years. Like, that's HTML and CSS and JavaScript. That's the state it's in right now. You're laughing, but that's the state it's in right now. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I like, um, I like, you know, I'm starting to like Twitter bootstrap. I, me- I remember, like, back in the days, uh, it wasn't cool to use Twitter bootstrap, but but now, now the more I think about it, it's like Twitter Bootstrap is just a fantastic solution um, for for web development because you know it's a it's a well thought out it's a well thought out process. You know, um, you know we're going to use this this and this um, this type of design kind of does the most conversions. Um, it, it's kind of like UI Kit, right? When you, when you're grabbing your your things in UI Kit, for the most part, your buttons should kind of look like how it looks in UI Kit um, or a little bit different from it. Um, and your tabs and things like that, and um, I think I, I see Twitter Bootstrap trying to do that for the web, and that's um, I think that's the best part. Um, you know, designers. You know, I'm a designer for the most part, and um, sometimes we try to go in there and try to make the websites, you know, really custom and add some unique flair to it. 
and um, and many times we, we could be trying to like imitate what's on what's on native devices and things like that. But um, but yeah, that's that's my I don't know, that's my rant. <laughs> Andy, I, you said you said cool, and I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm missing it, and maybe I'm just inexperienced because I just started doing this. But I, for me, cool, like I would use I would more, I would I would be more apt to use the word like I would like productive. Does it get me? Does it get me my product? Does it get my products out quick, quicker? Like, does it make my workflow easier? Does it make it easier for me to work with other people? Those are the things I would think about. Like, cool. Like, listen, I've I've seen this many times. Go online and just Google JavaScript versus PHP or something. Just or Ruby versus PHP. Like this, this flame wars, bro. You get you get on Quora and you see these things, bro. It's just like it's like um, MVC versus MVVM. Those debates can last four years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in my opinion, you just you have, you have to just give yourself a limited time to find something that works for you. And you just you just you just stick to it because, um, to be honest, like I read um, I read Ian's article on MVVM because it was in Objective C and I had not known enough Objective C at the time. Some of it went over my head, um, but like I'm just gonna stick to MVC for now. And in the future, if I can see where it's going to optimize my work or help me better to work with other people, then I'll make a change. But these debates, bro, every time someone comes in our, in our Slack community and says something about MVVM or MVC, wow. <laughs> Nuts. People go bananas. <laughs> yeah, yeah Sing I mean... Single things yeah. are a good subject, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just leaving now. I love yeah. watching how worked up Ian gets about uh, about singletons now. <laughs> yeah, hey I guess it's one of those things where, where a lot of developers see the value and then once in their lifetime they mess up and then it's the worst thing ever. Like that's ever, right. sort of what we do, right? We sort of like, oh no, we used this once and it didn't go well, so let's not do that again. Poisonous. Andrew, are you using that app by RealMac? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Real Mac makes it. Oh, no. Never mind. No, this guy. Other space. Oh. Um, but yeah, hey, sometimes, sometimes, it's, it's my opinion, sometimes we get so passionate about things and um, we lose the essence of, a, of having a conversation. Like, our goal becomes to convince other people that they should be doing things the way we are doing things. But I think that that's a bad way. We don't want to have an echo chamber where everybody feels the same way or we're falling behind at least one person because they're popular or something. I think when someone brings up a topic, we need to, we all need to reevaluate what we're doing and see if we could find a better way of doing it. I just We get so passionate, sometimes we get lost in the conversation. We're defending our point. You're listening to respond, not listening to understand. And that, that to me, can be a problem sometimes. I agree with that. I think uh, there's a lot of people who sort of feel like they kind of forget to leave out the this worked for me on my project at this time part. A lot of people tend to say like, well, this is a good way because it solved all of our problems. And it's like, that's right, it solved your problems. That doesn't mean that it applies to every coding problem ever, I guess. Like I said, would you stick to MVC for now? Which is fine. Like it's how people did it for years, and then there were a few people who were like, "But wait, I'm getting huge view controllers now. I want to solve that problem," and so they did. I like okay. MVC. It works for me, and um, we use MVC in the Stanford course, and y'all know that that's what that's what get me to where I'm at right now. So, so I just stick to it for now. You know, it, it kind of works for me. Well, the Cocoa frameworks are MVC, so you have to learn MVC. You have to use MVC at at some level. So uh, MVVM is great, and that's the way that I will do things, but uh, understanding and knowing how to use and interact with MVC is still extremely important. Yeah. It's, it's how people did it for years, how they will do it for years to come. And if you're going to go and look at, like, for example, I don't know, Rails maybe, like, do Ruby for a bit, that's MPC as well. And I don't think there's, like, an MVVM paradigm in Ruby at all. The MPC is all over the place. So 
There must be something right about NPC, I guess. It's not all bad. Well, I think in the web world, MVC makes a bit more sense because uh, there's it's a uh, it's a different paradigm, I, I guess, there um, than it is on the device. Uh, when when you're on when you're on the device, you you have you have less that goes in the other layers that aren't controller. So yeah. it, it's it, of course your view your view controllers are going to get huge because that's where everything goes. Yeah, with... I, I guess most web frameworks like they have like a database abstraction. Like I think that's the view model in iOS applications. Like there's some place where you go and fetch data and manipulate that so you can use it in your controllers. And I think that concept that's missing from iOS maybe for a bit, and that's why we use MVVM. I feel like that's the problem it solves. The, the whole separation of concerns thing, right? Yeah. 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 I think that's even more important. Like, don't name it anything. Just make sure that one thing does one job. It doesn't have to have a name. I see Ryan like throwing up his thumbs at that. Yeah, it's it's all about the separation of concerns. That it it doesn't matter what name you give it, so long as there is that separation of concerns, because that's what counts. Yeah, yeah, I, I, which, I agree. Which Jeff? Which which Jeff is this? Is this Jeff that's always in our channel? Yeah, this is Jeff Beck. Uh, okay. Nice to have you, Jeff. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. You're just kind of late for the whole thing. <laughs> We're just wrapping it up almost. I, I've been listening to the whole thing. I just got into the office now. Ah, uh, cool. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's cool. Um, any, uh, any final questions? Any, anything else that we need to talk about? What about our community? How do you guys feel about our community? I think it's cool. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 I mean, that's a given. Like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, um, I don't know if you know, guys, if you know who are all the admins, and I, th I think we need to really tell people who the admins are. It's me, um, it's Ryan, and it's Ian, and, um, and, um, and um, of course, Boyk. I don't, Boyk. <laughs> Boyk. Yeah. And, um, and James Martinez. I think, Jade, uh, I think James Martinez is spearheading things now, so we're kind of, um, he's kind of the leader back there right now. So, if you guys have any questions or concerns, you should always let us know. We will do that. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's wrap this hangout up for now. So we have like Very 45 minutes going. Let's keep it short and sweet. Right. Very good. I, I, I like that. Um, and, um, so when we play this again, we'll just do this, we'll do this in a family of fashion, family of fashion where we, um, we keep it short. We'll just keep it four topics. We could do 15 minutes per topic. I think it's more satisfying to everybody when we do that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I want to say thank you to uh, Donnie and Andy for uh, organizing all this and everything. It's, no that's problem. Been awesome. We want to try to do this like every other week. Yeah, Perfect. we want to do every other week, but we should do. I think we should do. I think we should do a technical talk, and yeah. I think we should do a talk a talk like this. So it should be two yeah. per month, one technical and one um. Yeah. So we have like the one general. week one is going to be technical, week two is going to be like this, three technical, four right. like this, five technical, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. Right. Let's let's do that. Let's know. make the next week happen. Shall we try to like use this time maybe next week? I don't know. Um, I like this time works for me. I just I don't, I don't know most people because I don't have a real job. Like my job isn't really real. <laughs> I just make my own schedule, so I can I can come whatever time. I just I just work around um, what time my students come in. So it, it, it's a, it's the people who have like nine to fives that I, I worry about. All right, let's um, let's discuss that later. Let's uh, right. let's make a, a spreadsheet like I did and let's see how everybody fills in. All right, and appreciate um, Donnie and, and um, Andy for doing this, as, as Ryan said. And if you guys, anything else to support in the channel, okay? All right, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, it's thanks, awesome. everybody, for joining. It was, it was really good. It was a good hangout. And, uh, appreciate talk soon. Appreciate you guys. Yep. All right. Nice